What's up, YouTube? It is Mr. Ferguson here once again. Thank you guys for coming back for another midweek quickie here on the Mr. Ferguson vlog channel. Thank you guys so much for the continued support of these videos. Uh, as I mentioned, we're kind of starting over here on this channel, but thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for those that continue to come back. Want to have a desire to hear about God's word and uh, to just be encouraged. I love listening to people's testimonies online myself and listening to other people's stories about what God has done for them. We had an awesome Easter service. I would highly recommend if you're interested, um, go check out our church's website. Uh, I kind of run it and put the videos up there. I record it similar to what we do here at the Midweek Quickie. It's called NHWC Bun. Um, and you'll see our Easter service where on the cover it says he is risen. I took a picture of the, the cross outside of our church area, but it was a very unique Easter type service. We had um, a brother and a sister give their testimony about how God has changed their life and uh, followed up by some words by our pastor, my father, Joe Ferguson. And so it was very good. I highly encourage you to go check that video out if you're interested and you love God and you love hearing his word and you love testimonies. Uh, it was not long. It was very brief for both of them. Um, but shout out to Ashlyn and Josh. They did a great job. They don't do this commonly, but God has touched their heart, changed them. And uh, I love hearing testimonies. So go check that out. NHWC Bun is the church website that my father pastors, we attend. If you're interested, subscribe to that channel. I'm posting the sermons uh, uh, weekly, so do that if you're interested. Today, I'll kinda, I'm not going to grab the Bible. We're not going to do actual scripture. I want to talk about something that kind of uh, has dawned on me, um, and I want to talk about the God of the future. Jesus, you know, I just read in Hebrews today, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He sets us up for success, <laughs> his people, those that love him, those that have a desire to know the Lord Jesus Christ. He is with us, even in our ugliness, even in our sinfulness. And I'll use some examples in my life, but I want to go to where it dawned on me once again, something that God said that didn't make sense. And all of a sudden now it makes absolutely perfect sense. And, and some of these examples, it's kind of similar to why I believe series. You know, one of the things um, was I went into the military. I had no desire to go into the military. I didn't care about the military. I never thought I would go into the military. You see some of these shows and see these people that when they grow up as kids, man, when I grow up, I'm going to be a soldier. That was not me. Um, I just knew that College wasn't my thing. School was not my thing. I wanted to get out and do something. I liked grass. You know, I liked being outside. I liked working. Um, I enjoyed it. Once I got into it, I had a motivation to, hey, let's make this look right. Hey, let's get this done. And so I, I just, I wasn't a book learning type of person. Uh, but when I got out of college, I got a job at one of my dad's former companies. And I was like, Okay, you know, I was still immature. I was 18, 19 years old. I ended up getting fired for doing foolish stuff. But then after that, I'm like, what am I going to do? I don't know what to do. And I prayed about it and said, what do I do? And dad mentioned, you know, hey, what about the National Guard? What about the military? And I was like, ah. And so after nothing else opening up for me, I went and joined and went to the military, ended up joining the military. Excuse me. I did so poorly on the test because I never thought I was really going to do it. I was like, whatever, whatever. And I ended up scoring average. <laughs> and I always will remember that the ASVAB test, I did a completely national average because towards the end, I was like, how long is this? And I just started guessing and, and rushing through it. That's, that's my tendency, just like my oldest daughter. Uh, but anyways, uh, but I went into the military. Well, as soon as I got in after 9-11, because I have a love for my country and we saw what happened on 9-11 and uh, um, 2001, I had a desire. I saw these guys on TV fighting. And so that did inspire me. And so I joined the National Guard. Well, through that encounter as soon as I got in got out of basic training it got real in basic training when they're like hey we, we can only do so much weapon testing because all the bullets have to go to Iraq over there that's when it really hit home like oh crap like I'm in it um, but as soon as I got back to North Carolina after all my training which was two years or so um, we started getting rumors that we're going to get deployed National Guard in North Carolina, I was going to say our hometown, but I was at that time stationed at a town called Lewisburg, North Carolina, had not been deployed since World War II. You're going to Iraq. And it was like, oh my gosh, the, the older guys, the National Guard, if you know anything about it, and, and I need to summarize all this, but it was laid back, chill, go out, get paid. That's what it was about. Well, now it's time to go make some money. I mean, it's time to go to war. It's time to, to, to get serious. 
Um, and so um, I'm young. My other two high school buddies that joined with me are in the same unit. We're all three from the same high school. We were ready to go. These older guys were not. So anyways, we go to Iraq. Um, we go, we get stationed, we come home. The point is that that deployment, though it was a little nerve wracking, but it was fun. It was encouraging. It was, it was, it was cool. Um, when I got back, not thinking about it, I now have all of these benefits open to me as a veteran of the United States of America, including, you know, the VA benefits of the, the health care, of health care for life as a veteran, you know, all these other things. But one of those was a VA loan. The home that I'm in today was only able to be purchased because I was eligible for a VA loan. And I've heard some of the financial people on the radio say, VA loans, stay away from them. But in my situation, God used this. I didn't have three pennies to, to rub together, but besides joining the military, now I had a steady income. And through going to Iraq, I was able to now, in one year after coming back, I married my, my girlfriend, uh, Madison, who is now my wife, Miss Ferguson. Um, we got a home that night on our honeymoon. She got pregnant. So within a, a span of several months, my life changed dramatically. I was now able to buy a house through the VA. I married my girlfriend, now my wife, and now she's pregnant and we got a kid coming. And now I got promoted into another unit and I'm about to go to Iraq again. So God even though in this time and period of my life, I was living for Stephen. I wasn't living for my wife. I wasn't living for God. I was living a lot for myself with the things I said, the things I looked at, and the things I did. I was very selfish. But God made a way for me to go here. And I told you the story quickly about this home. We looked and looked and looked. Stephen's going to get deployed soon, Lord. What are we going to do? We finally looked at this house where I'm at and said, Lord, if this ain't the one, what am I going to do? 15 minutes after that prayer, got a phone call. Congratulations, Mr. Ferguson. You're a homeowner. How does it feel? Oh, great. And this is where God, this is where God put us. Because of the military, here we are. Well, come, you know, let's fast forward. We have Natalie. We have Sarah Jane, two kids. They're now 13 and 7. Well, back when we were, you know, Natalie, my wife works at a preschool uh, way out in the Nightdale, North Carolina area. And so Natalie, my oldest, was able to go with her. And it's like, okay, this works out perfect. Natalie can go to preschool with mom. Well, then what about kindergarten? So now the school thing arrives. What are we going to do? Well, guess what? It just so happens happens in our in our neighboring town uh, 10 miles from where we live, they start a charter school and that charter school starts in a church. <laughs> and so it's like, awesome. So we put the name of my daughter in and she got accepted. And so from the very first school year, they go to this church um, for, for Natalie goes to this church for this, this charter school. And it's not only in a church, but a lot of believers work in it too. So as that happens, well, now this school says we need to, you know, they, they had a plan with the church, but they need to get their own property. Well, I'm here to tell you, guess where they built their school? They built it less than a mile from where I'm standing right now in this school. And so now not only did my daughter get in, but when we had Sarah Jane, well, now she's a sibling. She basically got in automatically because her uh, older sister's in. And now they're, they're a mile from our house. And I'm like, so God, so see, God didn't just put us here. He didn't, when I got that phone call, and it's all just coming back of how God works way, he was doing all this before I was ever even right with him. It brings tears to my eyes because he loves us and he loves you so much. He was working all this out before I even knew what he was doing. <laughs> He's so good. It brings tears to my eyes, but he's doing it in your life as well. And I bet if you look back, you can say the same thing. But so now we've got two kids going to an awesome school with awesome teachers, less than a mile from our house. It is convenient because whether it's me or my wife, most of the time my wife, on the way to the now preschool we've set up at our church, she's able to drop them off right there, right down the street, and we're able to pick them up. There's no buses for this school, but guess what? They're only less than a mile from our house. It works out perfectly. God knew what he was doing. And so it goes into the main part about what I want to talk about again. He knows our future. Even though we were living for ourselves in the ugliness and the sin, God knew one day Stephen's going to give his heart to me. He's truly going to give his heart to me. And his wife Madison is truly going to surrender to me. And they're going to live for me. And God knew that. And even, and he loved us so much he was working that out from the very beginning that I'm in the place 
he knew I was going to have a YouTube channel uh, to get involved in the lawn. And so this is the place he put me to do that. Now, going into what I really want to talk about of how he's just opened up my eyes is during the pandemic at our church, my mom and dad has been, we started that church in the living room of the home I grew up in, um, in the Bun area, North Carolina. We started in our house. We had two families that came regularly, maybe three. And then we got a little white building on a corner about a mile up the road. And we had, you know, 50, 60 people start coming. Then we built the church. To, so mom and dad has been pastoring this church. It was birthed by them. God told my dad to quit his job and to start this church. He resisted, he fought, he did it though. And so 90, I don't even know, it's been it's been almost 30 years now that they've been pastor in this church. Long story short, well, the pandemic comes, you know, 2020 comes, uh, the end of 2019, let's see, the end of, um, yeah, the end of 2020, I think, I can't remember. It, it was somewhere around February or, or March of 2020, I believe, that my mom, my dad, they said they, they never take breaks from the church and have other, I mean, we'll have guest speakers, we'll have guest uh, services, but they've never just taken off for a month and just been away from the church. Um, you can get burnt out, and I get I bet you guys know a little bit about that as well. You can get burnt out, and that's why when a lot of people press me, Mr. Ferguson, go into lawn care. You can make money. This is my hobby. I don't want to get burnt out. I enjoy it. If I do it too much, I, I fear that I might get burned out in lawn care. So anyways, they, they take a, a, a sabbatical. They take about a month off, and my dad, and he came back and told us this in front of the church. He said, We've been off. Thank you so much for letting us take this sabbatical. We were praying. I seriously thought when I took this sabbatical, God was saying, it's time for me and my wife, Rana, to, to move on from New Hope Worship Center, our church. Um, but I've done some praying, and I'm here to tell you, he's told me, nope, I've got more work I need you to do, Joe. And he's here to stay. And everybody was clapping. I'm like, yeah, Pastor Joe's staying. But he said, what God specifically told me in this time that because my dad is a praying man, and I'm so proud of him. He's a good golfer, but more importantly, he loves Jesus, and he prays all the time. He's taught me how to pray. He's been a great example to me, and I try to be that example to my girls. But he's a praying man. And while he was away from the church, they visited other churches. They attended other churches on Sunday. But he said, God clearly spoke to me, and he said, Joe, it's time to go and get the children. This church was was built on the children. When we had the church start in our home, my mom had a van, a caravan, a Dodge caravan. We would go around the community. All of our friends we rode the bus with, we would pick up these kids, bring them back to our house. We'd go upstairs and we would have Wednesday night classes. The girls would have their class downstairs. We would play, we'd wrestle, we'd go outside, play in the yard. We built little Pinewood Derby cars. We would go to Kinley and race them with the uh, Eastern North Carolina Church of God uh, gym and race them and have a great time. And so God brought that back to my dad's memory. And just like, and it goes with what I'm telling you today, that he said, this, ch this church was built on the kids. I want you to go out and I want you to get the kids because our Wednesday night had kind of fallen apart. I, I hadn't been going, but then God has just now brought me, you know, saved my life. And, and we're in the middle of the pandemic literally in the middle 2020 when he when he tells us this and we're all sitting there like and it kind of the sense i got from the congregation was like okay like you know i don't i believe you pastor joe but like we're fa look, like the government's locking us down we can't even go to work this is historical things why is god saying go get the kids it don't make sense but you know, we, we people aren't coming to church. They're scared. They're putting masks on and, and all this. Well, we got through the pandemic part and we start our Wednesday night services at our church. We got the Royal Rangers, two teachers per class, each age group. We got the girls, two girls or women per class, got the different age groups. And we've been going and, and, and doing this and, and people have been coming. It's slacked off some in the summer, obviously, but we've been pushing to do this Wednesday night. It's about doing a quick lesson and having fun and engaging with the kids. And now today, um, and, and just the other day, God brought this right back to my memory. Just like all the stuff I was telling you about my life in this home, when, when, when I'm hearing on you know TV and on the news, I don't watch the news regularly. I hear updates on the radio as I work throughout the day. But they're showing what is in our classrooms today. The pornography that's being shoved down the kids, K through 12. The word, the sexual, and I saw images of books that are in schools right now. Sexual acts being performed, blurred out. The words that are being read from the books. And it's like, oh my gosh. And there's this push 
from our culture and from the United States and obviously from the devil to just steal and rob our children of their innocence and teach them this homosexuality, transgender junk that comes from the demonic spirits and to push it on them, uh, age, gender, picking your gender, like God don't know what he's doing type stuff. It's religious garbage sickening stuff, pornography and wickedness being pushed on our kids. And as I began to see this stuff, I was just in utter shock. I, and I, my wife was on spring break. I said, listen to this. Listen to what they're teaching. And one of the examples was from North Carolina uh, of this taking place. And God immediately began to bring back, Stephen, this is why I told your dad to go and get the kids because this world wants to corrupt them. This world wants to destroy them. This devil wants to, to tell them, to feed them the lies that's going to ruin their whole entire life. But the New Hope Worship Center in Bud, North Carolina, I've told you, God already knew when we were, we were looking at what the pandemic was. Lord, what are you talking about? Get the children. The pandemic's going on. We got a faith. We got Joe Biden in office and he's doing all this and, and Trump started this and blah, blah, blah. There's division between politics. All of this is going on. God says, go get the kids, which was totally like not even in the realm of what we thought we should be talking about. But God knows all things. <laughs> Sorry, I still got a little bit of stuff he knows. He knew what was coming. He knew we would come to this point to where our world, our teachers, our, our schools are so corrupt and wicked. And not all teachers, not all schools, not all principals, but the ugliness and the wickedness that they're pushing down on our kids. And I just wanted to bring that to you today, that God knows what he's doing. If he speaks something to your heart and it's like it's out of left field, you're like, what are you talking about, Lord? It, it may not be happening right now where we can carnally see and hear what's happening in the world around us. We got Ukraine and Russia going on. As the last thing, like, what, what are we talking? God said, go get the children. That's what our church is doing. And it's not always easy. And we get kind of burnt out sometimes. And we got to get, get recharged in God's word and say, Lord, fill me back up. But I wanted to bring that to you that God knows exactly what he's doing. And you take this examples that I'm feeding you from my life and my church. And I want you to look at your life. Just take five minutes today and say, Lord, when I was back here doing these things, you were already setting me up for success doing these things. And I'm living it today. Thank you, Jesus. I mean, that's why we praise him. That's why we lift our hands and say, God, you are awesome because you know what we need when we need it, not when we think we need it. And so I just, I hope that makes sense. Sorry, I just got out of the prayer room. It was awesome. I was praying, God, fill me up to share, show me what to share with you guys today. So I hope that blesses somebody. I hope if you've never thought about these things, take, just take a moment and look back at where you used to be and how God knew that you would be, you would one day truly give your heart to him. Because if you're watching this, I believe you have and what he's done to get you where you are, and what he wants to do. He may speak in things to you now that he is going to deal with you in the future, and, and so on. We have to trust him. Be led by faith. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. We stay focused on God's word. We stay focused on prayer, and he will lead God and direct us. So thank you for tuning in today. It's a little bit longer than I like to get. I get going, and I get going, and the Holy Spirit starts just flowing, And uh, but, I, but I hope you grasp what I'm trying to say today. It's amazing how God works in our hearts and our lives. So God bless you today. We're going to work on a Wednesday video for the Lawn Care channel about putting down Hydrotane now. So it's, it's a challenge, but pray for me and uh, go check that video out on the Lawn Care channel, Mr. Ferguson Lawn, if you're interested. But we'll see you next Wednesday with another Midweek Quickie. God bless you guys. Thank you for support. We'll see you next time.